Hi, my name is Robert, and in this video I'm going to show you how I created the sky with the day and night cycle for my indie game Restore using UE5. The final result is a sky that changes its appearance depending on the time of the day, with volumetric clouds with a simple movement, all controlled by a blueprint that updates the time of day, lighting and other elements. We are going to be creating this system in its simplest form possible to make it easy to explain, but if you want to see a more complex example you can get the project files with all the materials and blueprints in my Patreon, the link will be in the description. Let's start by creating an actor blueprint and inside this blueprint let's add the first components that we need to create the sky and the lighting. We need a sky atmosphere, a directional light for the sun, an exponential height fog, a skylight and a volumetric cloud component, which you can add from this button here. If we compile the blueprint and drag it to the level we will have a working sky and pressing right ctrl L we can move the sun and see how everything updates. This works because in Unreal 4.24 was added the sky atmosphere component, which is responsible for updating all the values of the atmosphere taking into account the position of the directional light of the sun. So to create the day and night cycle we only need to rotate the sun, in this case on the y axis. If this doesn't work for you, check that your directional light is enabled to interact with the atmosphere by checking this checkbox here, but if you are using UE5 it should be enabled by default. Since we have all these components inside the blueprint, making the sun rotate is an easy task, we just have to get a reference to the directional light component and set his relative rotation on the y axis as the time of day passes. But before we start with the day and night cycle, let's first modify the volumetric clouds materially a bit, because I'm not a big fan of how they look by default. For this, let's select the volumetric cloud components, open the material and change these parameters until we find something we like. I tried to go for a more stylized look so I chose these values. Feel free to copy them or play with the material until you find the look that you like the most. Now let's add the functionality to make the time pass. For this we create a flow to variable to which we are going to add the delta seconds that come out of the event tick node. If we print this variable on the screen we can see how its value increases to infinity, so we are going to add a condition here so that if the value is equal or greater than 24 the variable is reset and returns to zero. I chose 24 to represent the 24 hours of the day, so the value 6 represents 6 am while the value 18 represents 6 pm. To adjust the length of the day, let's create another variable called time dilation and use it to divide the delta seconds so if you want the day to last longer, you can increase the value of this variable. Now that we have the time of day, let's use it to rotate the sun. We need to rotate the sun from 0 to 360 as the time of day passes, so that when 24 hours pass, the sun makes a complete loop and returns to its initial position. For example, when the time is 0, the rotation is equal to 0, when the time is 6, the rotation is equal to 90, when the time is 12, the rotation is equal to 180, when the time is 18, the rotation is equal to 270, and when the time is 24, the rotation is equal to 360, which is also 0. To achieve this, we have to remap the time of day. So we take the value of the time, divide it by 24 to give us a value from 0 to 1, and multiply it by 360 to give us the value in the range of 360 degrees. We connect this calculation to the set relative rotation pitch value of the directional light we created earlier. And now, if we simulate the game, we can see that the sun moves and the sky is updated, but we have a problem. When the sun goes below the horizon line, everything goes completely black. This happens because the atmosphere is no longer receiving sunlight, so to solve this we need to add a second directional light for the moon, which is in the opposite position of the sun so that at the same time that the sun hides, the moon appears, and the atmosphere is always lighted. This is possible because the sky atmosphere component supports up to two directional lights, one main and one secondary, which we can set using this atmosphere sunlight index variable. So, let's add a new directional light for the moon with LED's intensity and a bluish color and set the atmosphere sunlight index value to 1. Make sure that the sun has the value 0. 
To make it rotate, let's use the set relative rotation node. Now, using as reference the new directional lights that we created for the moon, and copy the calculation that we had done previously for the song, but in this case we add 180 at the end. This way we make sure that the rotation of the moon is shifted by 180 degrees compared to the song's rotation. Let's test and now the day and night cycle is complete. Now let's improve the night by creating a starry sky. The sky atmosphere component does not upset any material, so to add stars to our sky we need a sky sphere, which is nothing more than a giant sphere with inverted normals so we can see the sphere from the inside. You can create this sphere yourself using a 3D software like Blender and inverting the normals or to make it easier we can use the sky sphere that comes with Unreal and is located in Engine Content Engine Sky, this one right here. If you can't see these folders, make sure you have checked Show Engine Content and Show Plugin Content in the Content Browser settings. To add this sky sphere to our blueprint, let's add the static mesh component. Select the sky sphere here, and if we compile now, we are prompt to select the material for this static mesh. We don't have a material for the sky yet, so let's create one real quick and assign it to our sky sphere. To make this material, we are going to rely on some nodes that exist specifically to work with the atmosphere system. These are the sky atmosphere view luminance, which returns the color that the atmosphere will normally have, this color you are seeing here in the background as I move the sun. The sky atmosphere light disk luminance, which outputs the directional light sound disk luminance, and the sky atmosphere light direction, which returns the direction vector of the corresponding directional light in this index. First of all, let's select under the details panel the shading model on lit. Now let's start by creating a mask to identify when it is day and when it is night. For this, we can use the Sky Atmosphere Light Direction node, since it indirectly provides us with the position of the sun. If we isolate the value of the B channel using the Component Mask node and connect it directly to the emissive color of our material, we can see how if we move the sun, the sky changes its color between black and white. More specifically, the sky is white when the sun is right at the highest point and gets darker as it goes down. So let's take the direction of the sun, make sure the index is zero, isolate the value of B, multiply it by some value like 8 to make the transition harder, and then saturate it so that the value is between 0 and 1. If we test now this as a mask in a LERP node with the colors blue and red, we can see how when the sun is at its highest point the color is blue, and when the sun is getting closer to the horizon the color is red, which means that our mask is working. Now we can simply change this blue input to our daytime sky and this red input to our nighttime sky. The day sky is easy, we just have to add the sky atmosphere view luminance and the sky atmosphere light disk luminance and connect it to our LERP node to get the same visual result as when we were just using the sky atmosphere component without the sky sphere. For the starry night, we are going to use a texture with points like this one as a mask in a LERP node where A is going to be the color of the sky and B is going to be the color of the stars. Let's use a dark blue color for the sky and a white color for the stars, but feel free to adjust this until you get the colors you like. One quick note, if you notice here, I am using a texture coordinates node with the coordinate index set to 1. This is because the static mesh we are using for the sky sphere has two UV maps, and if we use this one, the texture of the stars will be stretched. Finally, let's add the moon by creating another sky atmosphere light disk luminance node, this time with the light index set to 1 and adding it to the final result of the night sky. We connect this to the previous LERP node we created, save and ready. We have a day and night cycle with a beautiful sky. But there is one more thing we can do. All these components that we add to our blueprint have parameters, which we can change to get different moods and even better, change them as time goes by. Let's take as an example the exponential height fog, specifically the fog density, and let's say that we want that during the day there is very little fog, but during the night there is a lot of fog. For this, we are going to use curves that return values for each one of the 24 hours of the day. 
We can create a curve by right-clicking on the Content Browser, Miscellaneous, Curve, and selecting one of the three types of curves that Unreal provides us with. In this case, the parameter we want to modify is the fog density of the exponential hafog, which is a float value, so we have to create a float curve. If we open this curve, all we can see is a flat curve, which we have to edit by right-clicking on the curve and adding new keys. If you put the mouse over any of these keys, you can see that it has a time and a value, which we can edit from up here. For our system, the time will be equal to the time of day, and the value will be equal to the fog density. You will understand this part better when we use this curve in our blueprint. Since our day and night cycle is 24 hours long, we can set what values we want to use for each hour. So let's add keys to make the fog density 0.2 from 6 to 18, which would be 6 pm, and 2 the rest of the time. Now we can use this curve in our blueprint by creating a curve float variable that references this curve, and using the get float value node and our time variable, we can get the value of the curve at this specific time. Let's take our hateful component, take the set fog density node and let's connect the result of the curve to this value input. We connect this to the event tick to update the value at each frame and we are done. You can do this for any parameter of any component. You just have to take into account if the parameter is of type float or type color and create the curve and use the corresponding blueprint nodes in each case. From here, you can continue expanding the materials we created or editing more of these components until you get the results you want. Remember that you can join our Discord server if you want to ask any questions and that you can get the project files of this tutorial by joining my Patreon, where in addition to what we did here, you can check how I made the material for these fluffy stylized clouds and how I added this Aurora Borealis. Huge thanks to my patrons that support me during this journey, you guys rock, and see you all in the next video.